So what is chain of density prompting and how can you use it to create short information rich summaries? In this video, we'll talk about how this algorithm works, where it came from, and how you can use it. We'll test out the original chain of density prompt, which is copied directly from the paper, and this is designed to use with ChatGPT4. Then we'll try out a modified version, which works better with ChatGPT 3.5. Then you can test out yourself for free. Finally, I'll share some Python code that you can use to analyze your results or make programmatic API calls to ChatGPT4. Let's go. Here's the paper. It came out at the end of September of this year, 2023. It's called From Sparse to Dense, GPT-4 Summarization with Chain of Density Prompting. So we could just go ahead and copy this text here. The basic idea of chain of density is to identify important entities to the piece of text being fed in and make sure those are being included in the summary and then iterating over this process five times in order to continue identifying entities which were missing from the previous summary. Here you can see some graphs illustrating the results of this where they're benchmarking against a vanilla GPT-4 summary and a human level summary for various metrics. And you can see that as the step in the chain of density increases, we're getting better performance out of our summaries. This is also illustrated in their example about an incident in the China Grand Prix. And you can see in their example, they're highlighting in green certain entities which were important to the article. And as the algorithm proceeds, we can see that more of these are, are being included in the summary. There's a great video from Superwise called Unraveling Prompt Engineering. That's where I discovered this technique. And they have a really great illustration of how this works. You start with an article which flows into this recursive loop where you're identifying one to three new informative entities and you're making a summary which is more dense than the previous iteration that includes the new entities in addition to the previous entities. We repeat this up to five times. So let's see how this actually works. First, we're gonna pick up the modified version of the prompt that works well with ChatGPT 3.5. I have that here in a text document, and I'm gonna look at an article of Claude Shannon. This guy was really important in information theory, and he described the concept of information in a mathematical format for the first time. So I'm gonna take um, a big chunk of text from this Wikipedia article, and I'm gonna stick it into the prompt. Then I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna put it into ChatGPT, and let's see what it tells us. So here it's written a list of JSON, just like we asked for. What's really important with my modified version of the prompt that works well with GPT 3.5 is giving an example of the output we want. So I added EG and then this really quick summary of what the result should look like as a JSON object. And by doing that, it has been reliably putting out this JSON object that I want. This is important for me because I'm gonna take this and put it into a Jupyter Notebook so that we can look at how this works. I'm gonna paste it into this cell. You can find this notebook on GitHub and run it yourself. Then I have a piece of code here that's gonna show us how this is working. So in the first summary, we're picking out important elements like Shannon's childhood, where he was born, his Gaylord, Michigan, and a high school he went to. Then we're picking out electrical engineering, someone named George Boole. And we can see that I'm highlighting these topics uh, where they appear in the summary. And I'm annotating them with a little number for the summary number that they were from. So in this case, for summary number three, for example, we can see a three for MIT which is a new topic for this summary, but a two for electrical engineering, which was a topic from summary two. GPT 3.5 in this case didn't do a very good job of keeping the previous topics in the future, in the next iteration of summaries. For example, Bell Labs completely dropped off, or if we go back to summary one, this information about where he was born and the high school he went to, completely disappeared. So now let's run the exact same prompt through ChatGPT4 like it was intended. And we can do that in this notebook here. I have a template which is identical to the one from the paper. And what I'm gonna do is replace this article text with the article that we want. 
I have a bit of code here just to load our API and be able to run that. And we're gonna be running this GPT-4 model. I'll note that there are cheaper versions of GPT-4, which cost a third, I believe, of GPT-4. So I'll copy the same article that I just used for ChatGPT-3 and I'll put it in here. And now what I'm gonna do is insert it into the prompt template to get this prompt string. And we're gonna see how many tokens it would take to run this. And we're gonna estimate the cost. So we're looking at about 10 cents for what I'm gonna do right now. Now that it's done running, we can look at the response and see how much it actually costs to do this. We're seeing it was about 13 cents. Let's take a look at the completion object that we got out of this. Um, if I just go ahead and print the string representation, it's pretty much unreadable. Um, but what I can do is cast that as a dictionary and look at the keys. And we can see we have access to various properties in here. So for example, there's an ID and I can look at the usage of the completion. And this is what I did uh, in this cell here in order to determine how much it cost us. What I'm really interested in is are these choices and specifically the first choice, which is gonna have all of the content um, that we asked for. And I can ask for the message in here and specifically it's content and you can see we're getting closer to what we want if i go ahead and print this we're gonna see a good a good representation of, of the answer um, it's in the right json format that we asked for which is why if i scroll down i'm able to just go ahead and load this um, into a json object which is this cod summary so this is a data object which is like ready to go in your application um, but in general, there's no guarantee that ChatGPT is going to actually re return something that, that will work with loading right into JSON in this step here. But it's done what we asked, so this worked fine. Um, I could go ahead and print that in, in a nicer format to be able to look at this. But um, in the notebook here, we, we can do the same thing that I, that I did for the ChatGPT3 code and print a a summary where I, I can actually annotate these topics. I'll note that even though I'm not exactly highlighting things, it seems from previous iterations, in this case, um, they do exist. For example, endowed MIT chair does exist here, endowed chair at MIT. Since it's not word for word, I wasn't able to automatically highlight it. I got much better results from this when I ran it before filming live, and I'll, I'll show what those look like. So in the first summary, we identify that he's an American mathematician, father of information theory. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom, what's cool is like in this summary, I'm actually highlighting things from the fourth uh, iteration. I'm highlighting topics from the first, this information age. This sort of prompt really lends itself as well to some human intervention where you could maybe pick the fifth summary but then add a little bit of information from the fourth or the third that you noticed it dropped or the sentence structure that it did a better job at. Actually in my experience I've noticed sometimes the fourth is the best or the third is the best. Let's show one more example with a totally different article type. I'm gonna grab an article from the government of Canada. These articles are insanely boring and long. Um, this one is on how home insurance works. So this seems like the perfect candidate to get a summary of. I'm gonna go back to my uh, text document here, and this is the prompt that's intended for GPT 3.5. And I'll paste this article in at the top. Then I'm gonna go back over to my 3.5 window and I'm gonna run this. So in the first summary, it's looking at personal liability, car insurance. This prompt, see, this summary seems still really boring. I could barely read it. In this case, it's actually gone ahead and, and made six summaries. Home insurance excludes certain unexpected events. Maybe what I would, would do is then I could say, okay, well, home insurance excludes like you know and i say like what article mentions home insurance generally excludes coverage for certain unexpected events like earthquakes and floods this is the very amazing part about chat gpt is that you can really talk to it all right let's see how gpt4 does on the same article we're estimating this one's only going to cost about six cents okay here it is glancing down at the summary with the highlighted topics 
and sort of looking at what these topics are, I can see that GPT-4 is doing a much better job at picking out important entities in this page. So this is a really good example to showcase how this is cramming all of these entities into a denser summary over time. The field of prompt engineering is rapidly advancing to the point where this prompt here probably won't even be relevant in a few years as we have different models and better prompts that do more effective jobs at communicating with them. But in the meantime, this is cutting edge and this would be my absolute go-to if I wanted to make dense, information-rich summaries. If you like this video and especially the programming part, you could check out some of my other videos on using the ChatGPT API or making a Mystic Hallucinations app, which was a lot of fun and there's some cool stuff in that video. Otherwise, thanks for spending some time with me today. I'm Alex and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, that's a wrap. Next. <laughs>